Hey there, welcome to the Audulous Build Podcast. Today we're going to talk about sequencers and how to make them. Uh, we're going to start off with the 8-step sequencer, and you can make this with any MUX switch. Uh, basically what a sequencer is, is it steps through different values, and you can use this for pitch, for parameter automation, uh, lots of different things. And this is just going to be the start of a series on sequencers, so this might seem a little basic right now, but there's plenty more that uh, you'll be able to do in the future uh, based on these principles. So let's create a patch. I'm going to go in the patch and create a bunch of knobs. We're going to create eight knobs. I'm going to take the name off there. and then copy and paste. And then this is a great way to quickly get a bunch of knobs you copy and paste and copy and paste again. And there you have eight. And they're all nice straight in a row. Now we're gonna call up a MUX node. And then a MUX switches uh, between its inputs to an output. And the select range ranges from zero to seven. And here I am, uh, what I'm doing is I'm arranging the knobs in a way that'll be easy to arrange them on the front panel. Uh, so I know that's, you know, the one that's turned all the way down is one and the one that's turned all the way up is eight without having to have them labeled. And the, we'll get the output of the sequencer and rename that and uh, take away the name because we're going to put the M on the middle and there's a light. It's going to be, yep. And just like in the attack release envelope, we, uh, expose the light with the green light uh, highlighted so we'll be able to see it. Got the M label for modulation. Now this is going to create a sequence between 0 and 1 and we'll do other things with it to modify it later but this is this is just the start. So create the input. This is going to be the gate input that'll step the through the sequencer in each steps. There's the gate label. G. I uh, cut and pasted it so I knew it was going to be on top of the light there. Now we're going to the math, number, count up. And this module will count up when it's pulsed with a gate. And then that will allow it to step through each of the sequencer steps. Okay, just arranging stuff. I always like to make my modules look really neat on the inside, neat and tight, so people can understand them uh, easily. There's the uh, module, um, the module title. Now here what I'm doing is adding the light indicator, so I'm going to add a 1 there for the input of the DMUX, and this is just took the number value from the countup module and put that on the DMUX, and what I'm doing is using these RGB indicators for, they'll be for the current step and the max step uh, that we're going to create here, so I'm going to quickly create 8 of them, same way we did with the knobs. I'm going to uh, arrange them a little bit. Like I said, I get a little tweaky about it. There we go. So I'm going to wire these up to the R input, and this indicates the current step. RGB lights are great for displaying multiple bits of information at the same time. So we'll, we'll get to the max step in a second here, but let's, uh, let's pop out to the outside of the module. It's important when you're arranging a module to always bring all of the elements away from this little point where all of them come and uh, are exposed to the panel and get stacked on top of each other. Because if you, if you build your whole UI around that point, then whenever you expose something new, it's going to be underneath something you already placed there, and uh, it'll, you'll just have to move a bunch of stuff around. So as long as you just kind of you know, start up higher uh, and away from that zero, zero origin point, uh, you'll be good for the future. So let's see. There's, there's all different ways you could arrange your sequencer. You know, here's, here's one way. Um, uh, you know, you can have them in a circle, you could have them in a straight line. Uh, I always like to 
you know, take the time to experiment and see what looks nice and, and what I think would be functionally good. Now it looks like uh, the, the module title is a little wide and I like to make sure the module is kind of tight. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to create a trigger here to uh, step through these steps so we can see where the light, which lights are which. But I'm going to rearrange the knobs uh, in, in a four by two uh, pattern because I think it would look a little nicer. All right, so one, two, three, four, move that out of the way. Five, six, seven, eight. And looking back on this, I realized I, I switched the seven and eight, or sorry, the six and seven steps. I fixed that later. But it helps to, you know, that's the debugging part. You, you usually have to fix stuff later in the module. Now, one way to, you, you want to check where the, uh, these hidden R, uh, light, light nodes are. And I'm copy and pasting it so this module is now on top. And you can see how it's semi-transparent. You can look at wh where are those lights and they're way there in the corner. You can see how it's, you can see, this is a little trick for RGB nodes uh, to find out where they are if you don't want to do that trick of, of attaching a one to them. Now what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to uh, step the trigger through. So that I know that's one. Step it through. Oh, there's two. Step through. There's three. Four. Five. This is another trick to arranging the RGB nodes where you want them. And then seven. Eight. There we go. I did that on accident. I'll put that back in a second. Realize that I wasn't. You can see though that the M the the M output is increasing. Oops. Lock UI. There you go. See the sequence stepping up like that. All right. Just want to scoot it out a little bit. There we go. I like the inputs and outputs to be defining the outside of the module, uh, both on the top and the outside. That, that just makes it for a consistent look. Uh, there we go. Realized it. Put it back in. Up. Oh, see. Now we can see it stepping through. Here I'm just going to arrange this a little bit so it's a little tighter. Put that underneath. It's nice and Audulous you're able to really quickly just be able to move groups of objects around to suit your needs, uh, move things in and out of the way when you're when you're working on a certain part of the patch. You end up with something really visually attractive like this. So it's, it's another great thing about it. So you're, we're going to make a uh, max step function so you can change the maximum step from eight what it currently is set at 8 to say 4 a little lower um, all right. so I'm adding an expression here and this is taking a knob and it's multiplying it by 7.99 the value 7.99 and flooring that which means rounding down to the nearest uh, integer we'll see here why 7.99? Well, look at the way that the, the action of the knob works. It goes all the way up to 7. Now, but if we change it to knob times 7 without the 0.99, you won't get this even sweep that you'll only reach 7 when you pull the knob all the way to the end. And there, there it goes. You see? But if you add that 0.99 in there within the floor, it evenly distributes the steps throughout the sweep of the knob. And why is it not one through eight? Well, that's just the way that the mux node works. Uh, zero, an input of zero selects input one. So if nothing was, you know, at the select input, then there automatically is a value of one there, or sorry, a value of zero there. 
uh, if the mux to select input one was one, then by default, step eight would be selected because of the way that the mux node wraps around. So even though it's a little confusing, you just, just know that the step one is selected by zero and then step two is selected by one and so on. And here I just wired up the, uh, the max step to another dmux and then wired those to the blue inputs of the RGB lights. And then you can tell right now that it's, it's all the way up at eight. So the eighth step is the max step. I range stuff, see? It's gonna go through to eight steps. Yeah, there's the max knob. It's because I copy and pasted it from the step one knob, it was there over on uh, top of it. So I'm just moving it around now. I know that's the max step knob. See, there, there. Uh, now it's a three step sequence, a five step sequence. Okay, so I added a label for the max step and just put max in there. Uh, the rest of the module feels self-explanatory. You don't have to put one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It doesn't really matter. Uh, I kind of like to keep modules simple like that. And here I'm setting it so you know this is the default setting that it'll come up on. And once again, I you can see I switched the six and seven uh, knobs, uh, and I didn't realize it until I started playing with it later when I made the demo patch. So I've since turned those around. Uh, saving it now into the iCloud drive. Uh, and at patch metadata, should have done that before I saved. Sequencer. Remember, I always had a little description there to uh, tell people what the module is and does. So that's it for the sequencer. That's the first, you know, first uh, pun intended step towards making your own sequencer. And uh, let's have a look at something. You, you can make some pretty amazing uh, patches with just these sequencers, and you don't have to just use them for melodies or, or tones. You can also use them to change parameters, as you see on the snare drum uh, and some other uh, uh, values that are changing the ranges of the notes rather than just the notes themselves. Thanks so much for watching the video. There's going to be more tutorials to come on sequencers in the future. In the next tutorial in this series, we're going to discuss how to make uh, an arbitrary number of steps so you can make a 16, a 32, a 64, or 128 step sequencer, whatever you want. Uh, you can do it by doing this, um, this method that I'll show you in the next video. Then in future videos, we'll talk about directionality, how to make your sequencer go backwards, back and forth, ping pong, uh, random sequences, lots of cool stuff. Uh, and then eventually we're going to get up to even more advanced sequencers like matrix sequencers uh, where you have an X and a Y sequence uh, running at the same time or you can have it go over the field in certain ways. It's uh, really cool stuff and uh, this is really one of those things that Audulus shines at to be able to create your own sequencer. It's sort of like creating your own algorithmic music generator. It's a really, it's one of the things that I enjoy most about Audulus. So thank you for watching the video. Uh, subscribe on YouTube. So, uh, follow us on Instagram, Twitter. Like us on Facebook. Please take the time to rate and review Audulus in the iTunes store. And uh, it, those, those five-star reviews and those good comments really help and we really appreciate it. And also join the forum. You can find this example patch on the forum in the thread about these videos. And uh, it's a great place, the forum, to, to collaborate, to ask questions, and to uh, just commiserate over how awesome Modulus is. So, thanks for watching the video, and I'll see you next time.